Good morning. I'll get screen share up and running. See some folks coming on in. Good to see everyone. Final call on anyone who's still editing slides. Hello. Liz, you're here. Hello. I am. Hello. Jeff, welcome back. Good to see you. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi, good to see you. Hello. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. I will go over and you grab attendance. Paste a link to the slides in the chat. Give me I'm a second here. I need to find them in my. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm sure they're there, but you know, my inbox is not a thing of beauty. There you go. Great. We're two after the hour. We'll give everyone a few more minutes to come on in. All right. We've got lots of folks on the line today. I see actually nearly all of our TOC is here. So Liz, do you want to get started? Shall we? Sure, let's do that. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Everybody made it, presumably. Yes. <laughs> this is this particular meeting. Good to see everyone. Um, this will be updated with TOC members present. So. All right. And uh, okay. Oops. I skipped the slide. Big pardon. <laughs> Screw me. Yeah. Okay. So I guess there's a few projects that need our update. We can also touch briefly on the plan for Sandbox at that point and then move into the SIG updates. Yes. Um, uh, note that we are missing a few SIGs this time. Um, SIG security is still kind of down some chairs and uh, SIG contributor strategy will be sending in written updates later. So. Okay. Do you want to talk us through the... Uh... I do. Yeah. Of note, we've got some annual reviews. There's a link up in here towards the board where all of this is tracked. We have some new reviews from last time we met. We have Brigade and Network Service Mesh, both are linked here. Um, the plus one right now means that OpenEBS has won, as of yesterday when I was checking on this, um, for TOC sponsors. Cortex, Telepresence, and CubeEdge have two. You need three in order to be able to complete this process. So. Um, my request of TOC members is to go and review these particular annual reviews, come in and ask questions. Um, and if you're satisfied, please put in a uh, looks good to me and I will move it on towards where it is appropriately supposed to be in the board. Any questions around this? I just want to emphasize these are all sandbox annual reviews. Correct. So we're not looking for any, you know, incubate. Well, they might be looking to move to incubation, but that's a separate 
process. Exactly. That is completely separate. This is our kind of new process that we implemented at the beginning of the year, and we're now seeing a lot of people kind of coming on through. So. Great. And actually, if any of the people who've been putting their annual review reports together, um, the ones that I've looked at so far, I have found it really useful um, getting a snapshot of what's happening in those projects. Um, and I think anybody who's interested in kind of keeping a pace with what's going on across all these different projects, these are a useful resource. All right. Any other questions on that? All right, we can move on. Um, also wanted to call folks attention to votes that are currently open. Um, we have Harbor that is currently open for graduation, Contour for incubation, Spiffy Spire for um, incubation. So if we can please get some input on that, that would be lovely. I have seen some votes coming through this morning, so um, I'm, I'm happy to be able to see folks come in and put their plus one binding, but um, they've been open about a week now and it would be great to be able to get your input here. Anything else around votes, questions, comments? I hear nothing, so we can move on. I will pass it over to SIG Actually, App Delivery. Oh, before we go to SIG App Delivery, let's just touch briefly on Sandbox. Well, just that's actually sure part of their questions. <laughs> okay, so, so. Um, the uh, TOC agreed last week, what we want to do is trial run the new sandbox process we you know we can back and forth about how easy or hard it's going to be all day let's just try try it out so um we've asked amy to uh, pull together a spreadsheet for the projects that are currently awaiting sandbox you know uh, review um hopefully all the information to complete this the spreadsheet the spreadsheet being based on the form uh, hopefully all that information is already available in the submission. So we're asking Amy to do that to save the projects from having to um, feel like they're reapplying. And then our plan is that the next time we have a private meeting, we will go through that process. Our plan is to hold that privately, but record it so that people can, um, you know, see the discussions that we have, but that we kind of not interrupted and that we can have that as a, a a group discussion amongst the TOC and you know maybe the process will turn out to be a disaster or maybe it will be all smooth sailing we will find out by experimentation any kind of questions or comments about that yeah, I have one um, related uh, and that is for projects that are under consideration for sandbox or I guess projects that are yet to be inside the CNCF, is there, um, is the use of dev stats or an analysis through dev stats, is that something that would be available to them as they go to, you know, uh, assess uh, where contributions are sourced from and, and kind of, you know, all of the Git based activities? Um, is that a service desk request away kind of a thing or is that, Maybe, um, Chris, you can answer. I think my understanding is that uh, dev stats gets added for projects once they are already part of the CNCF, right? Pretty much. I mean, it's, it's meant for uh, a service that we offer our projects, but, um, you know, if there's a request from a TOC member or someone that needs a little bit more um, extra diligence from a SIG point of view, we could see what we could do, but those are truly meant for uh, projects part of the foundation. Got it. Okay. I think at, particularly at the sandbox level, it, just the, the sort of surface information that we can see on GitHub is probably sufficient because, it, you know, we, we're really just trying to, you know, we, we wouldn't want to be um, necessarily accepting into sandbox something that, you know, somebody knocked together a PR that morning and there's literally nothing there, but, um, you know, we don't have like a minimum bar. So, um, yeah. Got it. All right, any other questions on that? Or shall we move to SIG app delivery? I had one quick question and I joined late. My Zoom was being difficult. Um, so I probably missed it and I'm sorry if you have to repeat it, Liz, but what is happening to the projects that are already in Sandbox? That's the ones you're gonna look through and vote on the private meeting. Did I understand that correctly? 
you mean the ones that are have already applied for sandbox yeah yeah Correct. yeah exactly so the idea is that rather than ask the projects to kind of reapply we're hoping that all the information to fill in this hopefully relatively straightforward form um is available and that amy will be able to do that on their behalf and then we can use that to kind of trial the process and you know we'll we'll find out by experimentation whether that process is more effective at least in terms of us reviewing it and uh, and then we'll take it from there thanks okay uh let's who's here from sig app delivery Who's here who's not on mute from SIG app delivery? I'm not actually seeing anybody. I'll give it a sec another second or so to be able to step in. We can always uh, move on to the next one and come back yep. if somebody joins. Happy to. All right. We will step on over. It may be worth trying to answer the SIG app delivery question, though. Oh, yeah. Um, because some of us who attend are here and we could carry it. And there was an open question here for the TOC. Oh, is this the, um, oh, wait. Mm -hmm. This is the end user question. The, the question. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, because if you've got end users, if you have it, and specifically you'll see, uh, does a project meet incubation criteria if its adopters are mostly not end users, but vendors? Okay. So I think this is probably one of those situations where we might be able to tidy up the definition but we might also want to rely on some level of judgment from the toc i think that's probably the way that it's worked before um because i think it is somewhat dependent on the type of project you know we saw this the the, the extreme example of this was with spec projects where you know end users almost by definition can't sort of explicitly directly use a spec um, so we wrote I wouldn't remember the definition exactly but we did try to tidy that up for our own um, judgment and um, so I think the problem is with these criteria is it, you know we might start ending up with a situation where we don't, we don't I don't know if it's always going to be a an absolute number of uh, companies so much as like understanding what kind of size and scale they are you know if we have oh and I see a question from Doug if it's an infra project then it should have it should yeah, sorry there should be periods between there sorry east lines of period <laughs> sorry about that yeah we, we had a, we had a very similar problem or question when uh, uh, cloud events went to incubator status because we had to have a certain number of you know end users and obviously most of cloud events usage is not for end users and we kind of winged it a little and we talked about all the different vendors that are adopting it and that seemed to satisfy the toc during the review process yeah i think it this seems like one of those criteria where it's quite hard to imagine a firm definition that we would always be happy with and that perhaps this is a better well, as Chris has said, the judgment called by the TOC at the end of the day. I mean, I guess this is another one of those things where, you know, public comment can also inform, you know, if people think that something is coming up for incubation and but, is, you know, we can always raise questions about that. But for build packs, I so, mean, end, end users are building things that are compliant with, they're using things that are compliant with the spec. <laughs> They end users are using build packs to build things. That seems like an end user use to me, even if, like, even if it's strictly a spec and not a, the implementation. But I mean, if 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 an end user is going and doing things because which they they find useful because it complies with the spec, then that seems totally sufficient to me. Yeah, I think my my recollection is that we tidied up a graduation criteria for specs and it was something about the number of implementations and then whether or not those were actually being used um was that for tough? much harder to measure that presumably that was for tough was it it was yeah 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 right uh so uh 
I'm Harry, and uh, I can add more details about this question. Um, so I think the current um, discussion around, okay, maybe some project, they are more like um, to be adopted by vendors instead of end users. So that is why we raise this question, because today we emphasize a lot on the end user adoption for incubation label, and of course with graduation criteria. But, uh, when we are reviewing um, the build pack, we notice that maybe it's more, uh, it, ten it tend to be implemented by uh, vendors or supported by vendors instead of end users. Uh, that is one observation, but uh, we are not very sure how to proceed with this project review actually. So I guess the useful information for us to make the decision would be to understand, you know, who the adopters are and if they're not end users, how does that, how is that characterized? You know, it could be that it's, it's implemented by, um, you know, two different vendors and then those vendors have 50,000 end users of that, those implementations that, that would seem like useful information for us to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think maybe this also points to a um, a general point that for these SIG reviews, it's not absolutely critical to, I mean, we're asking for a recommendation, but I wouldn't say it's critical to always have like a yes, no, uh, yeah. sort of pass fail on everything. You can have like qualitative information in the in the review yeah yeah i i i definitely i definitely agree with uh, the point here also somebody uh, you also mentioned the same thing uh, same, same same idea so i i, I think we will actually do the recommendation based on the current facts and we will mention that the adoptions of this project is actually more like vendors and we will let uh, toc to make the final decision because we can still do the recommendation around every other aspects of the project. I think that that's how we will, we will go in with this specific project. Great. Matt, thank you for um, holding us back on uh, onto this slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought a lot is easier, so sorry for that. So, yeah. All right, do we have anyone from SIG App Delivery who wants to talk about the status side of things? or shall we move to SIG Network? Yeah, I think we are okay to move to the next slides. Uh, this is, yeah, we only, we only have one issue to discuss today. We should run, we should run a build pack, okay. Okay. SIG Network. All right, Lee. Yeah, um, a few, a couple of projects under, uh, uh, proposed projects under review. The first of which is, and this is sort of in, well, almost in chronological order, I think if, uh, let me skip around for a moment and go in chronological order. And that is to say that Contour that's currently proposed for incubation is kind of furthest along in the pipeline. And um, probably the majority of the folks that are on the call here probably either weighed in on or seen the, <clears throat> Uh, the proposal for incubation, if you haven't seen it yet, just sort of a, a redundant call for uh, review there, I guess, from earlier. Uh, stepping back to the top under project reviews, the, in chronological order, it goes Chaos Smash is a project that's been proposed for Sandbox. It has, uh, its SIG review um, will be complete this week. Um, that we've uh, spent quite a bit of time with that team and with that project. And for as hard as I have personally tried to come up with something uh, to dig up the bones or to come up with something negative, I guess, or that, that we're really just saying this as a joke, rather I've got uh, nothing but, um, for my part, nothing but positive things to say um, that pending kind of Matt and Ken's um, analysis as well, but so far so good. Uh, Kumo was, um, also proposed for Sandbox. It was presented um, this month, this last, this the last time that we met, I'm sorry, not this month, the last time that we met last month. 
And so an active SID review um, starting there. We meet this Thursday and we'll receive a presentation from Ambassador for Sandbox. I say that tentatively waiting for correction, but that looks correct. Okay, good. Um, we, <laughs> uh, similarly for um, Meshery is another project that uh, shortly to be proposed for Sandbox, so sort of on, on the list. CNI Genie was uh, previously proposed for Sandbox and we just, we haven't made the right contact with those maintainers to, to actually get them scheduled for review. And so um, we might be, I think, I think we have a stale issue, a stale request sitting out there. So um, well, we're waiting for those maintainers to come back. A little bit of this is a recap, I think, from last time that we met, but it's probably good to mention again, because we've got different folks on the call and it's good to let things settle in maybe more than once. And that is the formation of, within the, the SIG, the, there's been interest for some of the participants around a service mesh performance working group. Um, there are about three high level goals within that working group. And I'm not sure if the subsequent slide made it in or not, it's not critical that we review it. But for those that have the link, it was a late coming slide um, that you can see there. And so we don't particularly need to um, cover it here, uh, but maybe it's, I guess, both a, a good to recognize that there's a, a, a working group being formed and good for folks to review the initiatives that are within there. All are welcome to participate. Um, much interest um, from a variety of vendors as well as universities in some of the research that's going on there. There's some research things, there's a spec, um, and there's actually a, a community bridge and a GSOC uh, internships that are hopefully will be stewarded or facilitated through that working group. Um, and those, those projects are focused on the projects that the service mesh projects that fall within scope of SIG network. Lastly, um, I think we noted, I think last time we met that we had an upcoming presentation um, from Jonathan Burby on the sort of the state of layer seven protocols that are not HTTP, really much more IOT focused protocols. And he delivered that presentation and it's available, uh, not only is the recording there, but his presentation is in the SIG network repo. Uh, so is it a job well done on his part? So um, I have a couple of questions on the, on the slide that is, you know, the new slide, <laughs> but I have the benefit of actually being able to see it. Um, so uh, a couple of really interesting things there. One, um, talking about maybe having some CNCF labs for benchmarking. So is the idea there that we'd be able to publish results for, I don't know, different scenarios to compare different service mesh implementations? Yeah, you pretty much, yeah. Um... That was, uh, yes, although I would ca caveat it with um, that, that being the, the potentially contentious uh, area of research and focus and the point there hopefully to lift, uh, to, to encourage and inspire confidence in how bad things could possibly, and just in helping provide people information, um, but hopefully lifting up um, all of the projects involved. Um, there are maybe some other more in, or equally as interesting things beyond a comparison about uh, patterns and best practices in terms of it really, these three initiatives, or at least the first two sort of inter interweave a bit. That first one, if, if we're, as we look at like benchmarking things and benchmarking various scenarios under different versions and different configurations, that we'll, we will see, we will see a bunch of different um, a bunch of different uh, perf overhead and performance scenarios. And what we're gonna try to do in this, this second specification is help people, help give people the right context uh, to measure, uh, when they're measuring the overhead of running some of the, their cloud native infrastructure, help also present them the, the, 
context for the value that's being derived from that infrastructure. Service mesh in particular is kind of interesting in this regard in that um, of the variety of uh, value that you derive from a mesh, oftentimes people are getting that value, uh, whether it's logs or metrics, some observability stuff, some security stuff, some traffic control things. They're, it's not like they're not getting a lot of these features and functions out of their myriad infrastructure today. They generally are. But uh, Mesh can bring a lot of those functions under one domain of control, under, into one system, into one layer, if you will. And it's lost on a lot of people that the overhead that's incurred from a Mesh, that there's a ton of value derived out of that. I mean, cl clearly there's value in that and people get that, but, um, but some of that value is softer, like, hey, a single point of control for all of those things were otherwise had disparate. And so my point is, is some of what we're trying to, some of the other scenarios and some of the way in which we hope that uh, we would empower people is to provide them a, a scale, a new a measurements by which they would um, weigh the overhead in context of the value that they're deriving. I guess my, my next question is whether the service mesh performance specification establishment of mesh mark is that the same tests that the cncf labs would be um it would be that that spec is um yeah or rather the two would go in combination or can go in combination they, they can go out of combination you can go run i guess that's a great question and the way that i would put it is that the spec helps uh, bring formality and repeatability to those benchmarks and help right. make So the benchmarks would be like an implementation of what's laid out in the spec. So then if somebody's submitting a service mesh, they kind of know what they're... Right. <laughs> Any other questions about that? I, I do actually have a question. Um, it, it, in relation to the to the benchmark and and to sort of the publishing of of results, um, you know we've been we've been working on a benchmarking doc and sort of performance analysis doc um, on storage for for a while too, um, and we were we were proposing you know kind of a set of tools that people can use to 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 run their own benchmarks in the in the storage space. But but one of the challenges that we saw was it was really really hard to ever get an apples for apples comparison unless you know there, there, are, there are so many caveats and so many what ifs um and and therefore you know we we specifically refrained from making any recommendation where we would actually publish results ourselves we what we really wanted to do was use us to test different options in their own environment under their own conditions because because really that's the only thing that that matters because the results in a synthetic lab are often irrelevant right to the end users real life application um so so i kind of wonder you know sh how how you got over that sort of mental block because because we we just <laughs> we, we we just couldn't um, get our heads around that 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 part of it I pre preach on Alex. <laughs> I mean, I, I, um, even it, it, yeah, and, and moreover, that those published results are a point in time, and each of the projects that are measured, uh, like yeah, the myriad number of variables that are under consideration for that specific environment, that specific configuration of those versions at this time under that load, under this workload, that is hopefully representative of your workloads that that, uh, well, yeah, that's in part um, what the, the other project Meshery was, was born of, was to enable and empower people with the tools to do it themselves. That the benchmarks um, published here are, um, that in the use of the CNCF labs for this are uh, to be very helpful to many who don't have those environments and don't have that, that gear or that kit to to do their assessment or take the time to do a one-time assessment themselves. But that, yeah, we would, for my part, uh, in speaking for that working group is 
and we'd really rather avoid it, um, sticking our foot in our mouth in terms of like, uh, in terms of publishing this outright comparative, this one's better than this one, like, or that is not the point. The point is rather in context of uh, common patterns or uh, common things that are deployed, or just actually the, one of the KubeCon talks that uh, a student was to present, it's not that, that, that they will present this upcoming KubeCon is on like a very grand, is on like, hey, narrowing all, a lot of the variables and saying like, hey, this function, maybe it's traffic redirection or it's a, or it's a denial, of, uh, denial of a request or like this specific function that you receive out of a mesh, that's in this scenario, like that's what this costs. Like here's the incremental cost to, to in part, Alex, to help, you know, to, to empower people with, um, and that's not a comparative thing. That's rather like, hey, what is the, what is that overhead? Like in a very granular way, if I'm looking at architecting my application around uh, the, the power of this cloud native infrastructure, how much is just incrementally, how much is that costing me for, should I take a two, two weeks of, should I take two sprints of my developer cycles to build in this network function and, and have it like I like it? Or am I, or is the overhead such that that, so negligible anyway that I should be moving briskly and taking advantage of the infrastructure. So uh, we're hope, I'm hoping for a lot of softer questions to come out of it and the comparisons aren't, you know, aren't exactly of the, the focus that it is to enable others with uh, the ability to do their own benchmarks because that, to your point, is, is in fact what matters. And it is a relative scale. I love that. That's sounds that that's actually really useful and really interesting um, um kind of uh, uh, way of looking at it um we we were we were also sort of a little concerned as to you know are we are we verging into king making territory by <laughs> by 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 putting that comparison online right and, and, and that was that was also something that was uh, we were really worried about and maybe that kind of publication of results thing is, is more, um, you know, at the discretion of the projects and maybe letting the projects kind of uh, choose where they shine, you know, yeah, totally. in, using this particular mesh, you can set up, you know, mutual TLS will cost you this percent extra bandwidth or something, you know, whatever. Yep, yep exactly. It, it totally, it absolutely is. And, and that each of them have been apprised and, and, uh, invited to be involved and, and as, a matter, as a matter of fact, I'd almost argue if they're not involved, then I don't know that publish it. Like it, it very much so needs to be with them kind of thing. Okay, cool. I can see it being a really useful um, resource for users to help them understand whether they want to add a service mesh or not. Like that whole kind of what performance impact will it have question. Yeah, it's important. All right. Thank you, Lee. Let's move on. Hello, runtime. Hi, this is uh, Ricardo. Yeah, and so we have um, some sick runtime updates. Uh, so projects. Um, Quay is applying for incubation. Uh, so the due diligence uh, document is uh, done from the sick runtime perspective. We provide a recommendation. Uh, but still pending a security assessment from six security. So once that's available, uh, uh, it'll be ready for the TOC for review. That document's not public. Okay, so we'll thank you and then we'll provide that document. We'll make it make sure it's public. I think uh, uh, it's actually started by some of the folks at Red Hat. Uh, so then we'll provide that. Well, I think it's some of the, the people on, in the call uh, uh, from Red Hat, if they're, they're available, they, uh, maybe they can make that public. Thank you. Uh, so Metal uh, Cube is another uh, project from uh, Red Hat. Uh, they're applying for Sandbox, so uh, the document is ready. Uh, and they're basically looking for TOC sponsors. Uh, so anyone who wants to sponsor that project, if he has any questions, you know, they can ask uh, us or, or the project uh, maintainers. 
Cubate, uh, it's another project uh, looking to apply for incubation. They're gonna have a presentation uh, at our next uh, meeting on Thursday. Uh, so Cubate is uh, basically uh, edge workloads on top of Kubernetes. So um, after the presentation, we'll go forward uh, and see what happens. I think uh, K3S is another project applying for Sandbox. Uh, it's a Kubernetes distribution. So uh, there's been a lot of discussion and uh, PR. And, uh, you know, they're not really sure uh, how, to, how to proceed. I guess, uh, you know, there's some comments about the Kubernetes community weighing in, uh, whether this will fall within the Kubernetes uh, community or whether this will be a, a CNCF project. So I think still waiting for, for the Kubernetes uh, community to weigh in. So it's in the scope of the SIC, but you know, uh, you, based on what the community says, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. And container device interface is uh, another uh, proposal um, they, uh, they presented at our last meeting and they're looking at creating a work group proposal uh, or a work group. And so the proposal is in first draft available publicly. Uh, and yeah, and then, and then so we'll follow the process, you know, what it takes to, you know, to create the work group. And this is basically, uh, you know, some of the folks trying to come up with uh, a common interface for devices, for containers, uh, mainly driven by the NVIDIA folks, but uh, also applicable to other types of hardware like um, uh, networking interfaces and you know some other uh, specific um, hardware interfaces. Then as far as um, communities and presentations and reaching out, uh, Lupin, which is a um, uh, container uh, slash uh, unikernel uh, based on a very uh, stripped down Linux uh, kernel uh, is um, presented at our, our, our meeting in two weeks and this month. Uh, so this is a project led by IBM Research and there's a, there's a paper uh, based on that. And then as far as uh, uh, Virtual Cloud Native Summit China, so we, we uh, submitted an intro session. So we'll have an intro session to try to get more uh, community involvement and awareness. Yeah, the, those those are the the, the updates for SIG runtime. Uh, any questions? Uh, just a comment on the metal metal cube. Uh, it says that it's old process, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna cover it as a part of uh, our trial run for sandbox process. Uh, please, can you can you confirm? Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. And then I'll, yeah, okay, so yeah, we'll check. I'll, I'll try to open up that Quay document right now. To, um, Great. I don't know if I have rights or not, but I'll try. Great. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if for some reason you can't change it, then then we can create a new document, a public document. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay. I think, um, you know, K3S probably deserves its own um, agenda item at a, a future discussion. It's it's obviously kind of it, it's marked itself as a distro, it, you know, but it also is maybe solving some problems that you know are cloud native. So there's a there are swings and roundabouts to to what we do with that project. So um, yeah, we should spend some time on that. Yeah, it's a very popular project and solving a lot of our use cases. So that's where, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, you know, whether it should be a project or, or it should be just a part of a distribution within Kubernetes community, you know, uh, or, you know, they will benefit from the CNCF being, uh, you know, part of the, the whole set of projects and get more community awareness and more, um, exposure to end users, that type of thing, right? So, yeah. All right, thank you, Ricardo. Six storage.
Alex? Are you covering this? There you go. Um, you can. It doesn't matter. Happy to do okay. that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so we have uh, we have two uh, we have two projects um, going through uh, graduation, um, TIKV and and Rook. Um, the due diligence documents have been um, completed. We've we've had the the project presentations, and we're just going to be we have to type up a, a, a bit of a I guess a formal recommendation um, from this from the SIG just just to tie it all together. But I but we should be good to go on on both of those um, projects to, to take it to a vote shortly or, or to, sorry, do the two week um, periods shortly. Um, uh, and, and we also have um, uh, another project which is, uh, which is in the wings called um, Proviga, which is um, an interesting cloud native um, uh, streaming storage project, um, I guess, the closest thing that it's similar to would be something like Kafka, um, but it's it's a it's a fairly mature project, um, and we've had a we've had a we've had a SIG presentation uh, already, um, and they are they are looking to uh, the, the the project team are looking to um, to submit this for uh, uh, an incubation project. So this is this will be something that will be on the on the agenda for coming up. Um, and finally, we wanted to update the the, the TOC um, on the um, on the situation we we had with um, use case uh, documentation. So, um, following on from the from the um, landscape white paper, um, which which uh, of which just as a tangent, we're 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 about to ready to publish now. Um, we were we have been trying to figure out the next steps being um, documenting a number of different use cases of um, how to implement um, different types of use cases on, on different types of cloud native storage to, to kind of go more, uh, to kind of provide more depth to um, to the, the, the landscape documents that, that we had published. Um, and at first we, we talked about you know, um, having use cases that were specific to to particular projects, um, but a lot of the use cases or a lot of the consumers of cloud native storage might not necessarily be um, CNCF projects uh, in themselves. You know, so so a lot of the databases that or or message queues or or instrumentation or whatever that 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 use cloud native storage might not necessarily be a CNCF project, and therefore, you know, we thought. Developing those kind of use cases might um, might create the, the the semblance of a formal recommendation. Um, so we decided to uh, we we decided to try scaling it back and kind of create categories of use cases um, where we where we would you know create um, groupings like databases or or, or message queues um, and and provide some some general recommendations you know along the lines of um, Use uh, you you know optimize databases for consistency, for example, or whatever else, um, or performance or latency or things like that. But but then we kind of came to the conclusion that creating um, creating that those sort of use cases for uh, groups or categories of of projects didn't provide a lot of function for the end user because the end user really wants to have um, you know specific tuning or, or specific um, uh, specific recommendations for their specific um, for for a more um, targeted use case so we're, we're, we're kind of in this um, in this uh, scenario now where we're, we're thinking we might actually pull back because we just could not come to a reasonable way of providing use case information for projects without it appearing to be um, king making in some way or appearing those those that list to be recommendations from the sig um, so so we're 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 going to try and open it up to projects and hope that you know projects can provide um, uh, use case uh, recommendations based on a template that we've that we've built um, because I still think the template is useful um, but leave it up to the projects to to to, to provide the the recommendations um, based on the attributes that we describe in the landscape document. 
And where do these get published in the end? Well, what we were hoping to do was was to build a library of use cases in the in the SIG storage um, GitHub. But, but this 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 was the point. It was kind of like you know if we provide recommendations for how to run, say, Postgres for the sake of the argument in cloud native storage, would that be seen as an endorsement of Postgres? Um, and you know similarly you, you know you could pick any other example and have the same kind of questions so so that that's basically where we were <clears throat> where we were um um coming stuck so uh, I'm, so I'm curious to i'm curious to understand what what other people think about that so our just to articulate that alex we we are not going to publish them now, this is what we were saying, because we worried by doing that, we would be establishing one thing over the other in terms of key making. So we've, we pulled back from publishing this, but if, if people don't view it the same, then maybe we'll reevaluate it. But it became so generic, we didn't think it was worth our time or helpful for the user community, just to say generalized database could be any of these and actually provide something that's useful. Right, so it sounds like the, there might be a kind of landscape-y, these projects fall into these categories of things, but that would be about the limit of it. Yeah, so, so you know, the, the, the current landscape um, white paper document that we have um, published already covers, you know, um, block file system, distributed file systems, object stores, key value stores, databases, and, and, and gives some examples of those already. Um, the use cases was, was going to be more about, you know, how, how those, how specific examples of, or specific systems could consume that cloud native storage, right? Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was sort of moving it um, a step further, so it wouldn't be as generic um, and, 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 and that was the challenge. Okay. Hmm. Which, which, you know, the, the minutes that uh, Lee mentioned um, publishing benchmarks from, from different mesh projects, I, I kind of saw, ooh, okay. So maybe if that's okay, maybe this might be okay, but I, I, I don't know. The, I guess the, the difference is that um, a lot of the consumers of storage are not necessarily going to be CNCF projects out of the door. Right. So our recommendation was to have projects provide these and point users because it is a common question that we get at KubeCon almost every time. Um, are how do we do this? How do we set it up? What do you recommend? Very specific, opinionated ways of doing things and we feel that's kind of outside of our purview but I don't know I'd like to hear the TOC's opinion on that yeah I can see that if end users have questions as an organization we would like to be able to answer those questions but if we can do that without the whole king making you know, if we can't do it without king making, then it's then it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty cool with this idea of having the projects contribute their own use cases, and it's kind of like, you know, each project is able to, I don't know, market itself in you know this is what we're good at. Yeah. 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 And and you know. Um, we can provide, you know, we can provide the venue for for helping to publish and and kind of um, iterate through them and keep them reviewed because we 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 also talk, talked about you know a simple process to just to make sure that the use cases are kept current and that sort of thing too. To be clear, are we talking about projects that are already part of the CNCF or just any project? Well, at this stage, I was thinking projects which are part of the CNCF. Okay. So 
Alex, are these, I, I may have miss, not been listening closely enough, are these abstract patterns and best practices with backed up with specific examples using particular projects? Yeah, so, so for example, if we were, if, you know, if we were to say, um, if you want to run an object store, these are the type of, um, these are the type of patterns you would choose to use. But of course, you know, just as, a, just as an example, you could use Ceph as an object store or Minio as an object store. But the recommendations for how you deploy them and the best practices and everything, you know, anything related to that are very different for Ceph and Minio as, as a simple example. Um, so it's it's kind of hard to say, you know, you should use a block file system or or you should use a distributed file system or you should use this type of replication or or whatever else if if you don't have the specifics of the of the you know if if you can't mention the specifics of the particular um, consumer of the storage. The, the, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do see that it's much more valuable when a specific example is given or it's easier for people to digest. That doesn't mean that the pattern itself isn't, um, isn't useful or, or speaking to a use case where here's when you'd want to have um, you know, six copies in your object store. You want to be redundant at this level based on certain criteria of, you know, of, of objects to be stored. That hey, a consideration is the latency across geography geographies or such and such. That no, no, indeed, and 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 that's the thing. I think those those sort of generic level things where we talk about the attributes like latency and consistency and durability and scaling, and we talk about you know the the topology of the storage and the number of copies and the, the data protection and data services and things like that. We, we, we kind of cover all of that in, in, in that 50 page landscape document. So, so, so this was kind of, we were looking at this as, as, as the next evolution, I guess, the next step to, to, to take it from there. Yeah, we run into a similar, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm facing this myself. I'm, I'm, I've just started to alter um, service mesh patterns through O'Reilly. And as part of that was, had been approached um, once from those wanting to bring service mesh patterns to the CNCF and to the SIG network, which is great, uh, which is a good home for a lot of those things. Uh, and also I'm aware of uh, an end user group that's I think focused on service mesh um, best practices, which, which is great. Um, and so I don't know that I've got, a, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out myself. I don't know that I've got um, the answer about the, I think Aaron had mentioned earlier about just things becoming too generic such that like it's not worth doing or it's not insightful enough. It's not prescriptive enough. Mm -hmm. um, there are maybe, maybe by way of anti-patterns, you might be able to, you know, like that might be a way of keeping things clean and still being useful. That, like, you know. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that idea. I, we hadn't considered that, Lee. Um, we just mainly wanted to avoid taking a particular technology and doing use cases in the event we would accidentally not highlight one or misrepresent it. Um, so I think putting it in the hands of the project owners allows them to ensure that that content is accurate. And then, uh, but I like the idea of the anti-pattern. We should definitely discuss that, Alex. Yeah, that may, that's, that's actually a really good idea. Thanks, Lee. Great. You're super faint to me. I don't know if it's for everyone else on the call as well. I just want to let you know. Interesting, but I think, yeah, the users are not looking for something generic. The users are looking for something concrete. Uh, doesn't matter what project it is. I wouldn't look at as an end user. I wouldn't look at it as a queue making. I would just look at it as an example. Um, and as long as we give uh, the users a chance to submit their use case uh, as an example, uh, I think we are fine. I suppose also if they're open, 
you know, if these are documents that are managed in GitHub and a project feels that they've been missed out or misrepresented, they can address that by submitting a PR. This doesn't have to be, you know, a group of sort of, I don't know, ivory tower authors writing this thing. It can be collaborative, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, but then what do you do when, you know, I don't know, um, an oracle or whatever submits a PR because it's good marketing and, you know, you, <laughs> how, 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 how do you make that call as to whether something's in or out? That, that's the that's yeah, challenge, right? You accept every PR. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess like any project, we have to make judgments about what's good for the you know, in this case, the project being the, the documentation, you know, what, what's good for that documentation project, what's good for the end users, the readers of that project. Maybe emphasizing projects that are in the CNCF to start with would be another way of steering yeah. that judgment. Agreed. Here's, here's a thought I'll offer really quickly, and that is potentially that the SIG is, is publishing the generic pattern and, but providing a space for vendors to link to their, their write-ups of their specific implementations such that there isn't, maybe you avoid some of that awkwardness. That, 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 that's exactly how, it, how our template is, 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 is structured. Yeah, we, 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 were, we, were gonna, we were going down that route actually. Great, I think we should move on because we just have a couple of minutes left and we have SIG observability, but thank you. We don't actually have any of the SIG observability oh. chairs here. So um, it's just a note basically saying like we need some TOC votes on um, a tech lead nomination as well as a third chair nomination. Um, so we are, we are actually mostly okay on time. Okay. Um, In that case, I, I, I apologize for interrupting <laughs> the discussion. <laughs> no, this is good. I think we should probably add this in for um, some of our conversation for our next TOC SIG chairs meeting. Because um, it seems like there's plenty in here. Um, and my last note, if she's still here, I believe I see Priyanka on the line. So a quick shout out to our new general manager here um, at CNCF. Yay, Priyanka. Hooray. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. I didn't want to ambush you with like a full like introduction in here, but just a quick shout out. Thank you so much, Amy. Yes, uh, I'm, I was so glad to be able to listen in. I've been doing that since before I got into this role. Um, uh, you folks work so hard. <laughs> just listening in, I'm like, man, this is a lot of work. <laughs> uh, but I know there's no time uh, today. Thanks for the shout out, Amy. And maybe we want to um, have like a little bit of space in the meeting you recommended. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think probably our next meeting will be, as I look at a calendar quickly, June 16th is our next TOC and SIG chairs meeting. So we'll add some pieces in there as well. So. Fantastic. All right. all right, look forward to seeing you all at that. And uh, welcome Priyanka. Fantastic high notes to end on. <laughs> to see everyone, be well. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks, so congrats.